tonight on Evening. It's your fall travel guide to Lake Chelan. From the best wineries to a remote destination you can only reach by boat. It's a beautiful, relaxing place. And where you can press your own cider. Let it rip. Plus, two spots to grab some food while you're on the road. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Jose Cedeño and tonight I have a special guest, Kelly Hansen from Local Lens Seattle. By the way, I like your hat. Hat game is strong tonight and we are in Lake Chelan celebrating all things fall. And we're kicking things off right here at Cider Press in Manson. And just like the name says, you can press your own cider. Yum! They say this land can produce some of the best apples in the world. And companies like Manson Growers are ahead of the game. This is an operating packing warehouse. Locally grown, fresh apples. My family has been growing apples in this valley for over 100 years. It's really a labor of love. Growing apples is a year-round activity. Fall is when it all comes together. The apples start to really develop their quality and their flavor profiles. Lake Chelan Valley is really unique. It's a microclimate that generates some of the best apples in the world. And the best apples make great cider. This is a non-alcoholic cider. That's exactly why they have Cider Press, a brand new coffee shop where you can create your own cider. Cider pressing is a local tradition families here have been doing for generations. It's really hands-on and family-friendly experience. Sounds like the perfect adventure for Kelly and myself to try. So may the first blend win. The first step in producing the perfect cider blend is to pick out the perfect apples. Pick and choose whatever you like, whatever you think will make the perfect blend. After picking our favorite apples, we spray them with cold water. And it's showtime. We're gonna start grinding. Let it rip. We so got this. It's almost like we've done it before. They shouldn't quit their day job. If you don't get a little sticky in the process, you're not doing it right. We move from the grinder to the presser to start squeezing our goods. Teamwork here, <laughs> we're pressing. We try Kelly's blend. Cheers. It's tangy, it's sweet, it's delicious. It's 10 out of 10. Not bad at all, but it's my turn. Now this is the Jose blend. Let's see. It is sweeter. Yes, I know, <laughs> sweeter. Much sweeter. It's so rewarding to see people smile, have fun, and learn something about apples. That was so much fun, and you can actually book a cider press online, and they're open Monday through Saturday. Well, Kelly, at the very top of Lake Chelan is Tahikin, a small community that has been in the news lately because of the wildfires. But as I find out, they are good to go, and it's definitely worth visiting. It was an early start for me to catch Lady Express. What a beautiful day to take a boat ride. They say the journey to Estahican is part of the adventure. One that I was so ready for. It didn't take too long to experience the beauty that Lake Chelan has to offer. Once the color starts coming out, it's pretty beautiful. The sun, the mountains, and the deep blue waters make this ride special for everyone on the boat. It's a beautiful, relaxing place. Yeah. After a ride that took a couple hours, we finally arrived. This is my first time in Stahikin, and I'm really excited about it. The first thing that I got to check out was a general store that offered pretty much everything when it comes to souvenirs. Well, they do got the hats here. Black Bear Claw. I don't think you can do better than this. Done shopping and ready to explore and discover this magical place, especially on this time of the year. Things that people should do here in the fall. Fall is the most beautiful season. Not as crowded. Weather is usually mild. It's perfect for hiking. You will find plenty of scenic trails, viewing points, 
and peaks. There's not a lot of snow at the top, so you can get to the top usually. If you like to fish, fishing's great. Activities that will connect you with nature. It's fun to see all the wildlife. A breathtaking destination deep in the heart of the North Cascades. Have you ever been in a place where you get to see a great view and then the perfect view? Voila! A lot of people thought this place kind of would shut down after the fire. Just to make it clear, the fires did not make it all the way down here. No, not here in the valley. You can see just up on the hill where those dead trees are. Yeah. It was up there. The fire did get close, but it didn't come into the valley here. That means they're open for business and encourage visitors to come. The majority of people that live here survive off of tourism. There are so many reasons to visit this part of our state, so escape the buzz of everyday life. This is not a goodbye, but more like, I will see you later. That was such a fun trip, but I'm gonna have to admit that it was a little quick because it was for work. But I promise I will be back to do some hiking next Can time. Can you bring me next time too? Mm, let me think about it. <laughs> okay, well, then I'll think about taking you for my next story where I feature world-class wineries. So take a look at my recent episode with Local Lens Seattle. This is the Dolce Vita, expression of the Italian sweet life. And so we're gonna do some Italian vineyard rides into the Sangiovese vineyards. You get to taste the wine, you get to taste the grapes that are grown in that Sangiovese vineyard. And it's going to be literally from the vineyard to the bottle to your enjoyment. Cheers! My next two stops showed me around their production spaces and vineyards, starting off on the North Shore at Lake Chelan Winery. It's known for being the pioneer of the Lake Chelan wine industry and one you absolutely cannot miss for their barbecue nights and more. We wanna see the seeds. We wanna make sure they're somewhat brown. If we have a lot of green seeds, then we know our fruit isn't gonna be ripe or up to spec. Next, Fielding Hills Winery on the South Shore. Such a stunning location with views for days. I met their winemaker and went on a Grape 101 tour through the vineyards, learning all about their production. I feel like now I know a lot more about the wine industry and I'm having such a blast during wine harvest. Hey, right time. Throughout the vineyard are scarecrows. Yeah. And you're to count the scarecrows as we go. And if you get them all right, the exact number, okay. you get a gift certificate. Woohoo, boy! Hold on to your hat. It's a, it's a little bumpy of a hayride. <laughs> I'm in love. It's the first time, and I'm really impressed. It's just so beautiful to see these beautiful mountains and, you know, and the, in the, in the water, and look at the water, and, and all these wineries. The wine tastes so good. It's just like amazing. My jam packed fall weekend in Chelan didn't stop there. I checked out Vin du Lac and their amazing U Pick garden. So we'll plant a bunch of stuff that will overwinter. So we've got kale and lettuce. Now I get to actually taste this food in their amazing dishes at the bistro. Taste test time. Fresh, stunning, highly, highly recommend. And if you're wondering if I'm eating alone, because I feel like when I eat alone, everyone thinks that I'm a food critic. I'm not, I made friends. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I'm ruining their date night, but it's okay. <laughs> Always welcome. Good job, Kelly. Good job. <laughs> that was a super fun video. And to see more of my adventures, make sure you subscribe to Local Lens Seattle. I can tell you worked very hard on that story. I did. Yeah. And everyone, you know, deserves a fun day like that. Still to come on evening. Saint hits the road for one of the tastiest drives in Washington. What can I say? I'm hungry. And later. Hi, I'm Tom Douglas, and today we're going to explore soups that are perfect for the fall season. Portions of Evening, sponsored by Visit Lake Chelan. <laughs> Local stories make a difference with the power to enrich lives, strengthen communities, and make us smile. <laughs> Evening is made possible by Primera Blue Cross. Primera Blue Cross, always in your corner. 
Welcome back to evening. We're at Lake Chelan celebrating all things fall. That's right. And making it here is just half the fun because if you get a little hungry on the road, well, Saint found some spots. Our Stevens Pass Pig Out begins with a stop at the always popular 59er Diner. It's simple food, but it's made with the freshest ingredients, and we go out of our way to have fun. Fun was the last thing on owner Joe Canada's mind in the summer of 2016, when the diner burned to the ground. I remember walking through the rubble of the old diner and just sifting through things. But dressed as his hero Elvis, Joe led a comeback tour, and the shiny diner, the waitresses named Flo, and most importantly, all the customers have returned. They only come once or twice a year, but they always stop every single time, and they always stop and say hi. And most of them order milkshakes. There are 20 flavors, and the 59er keeps count of each and every milkshake sold. They also keep a running tally of milkshakes sold online. This is the 14,276 milkshakes sold this year. 277, 278. What can I say? I'm hungry. These are shakes made big enough to be eaten. Good luck using a straw, kid. The milkshake machine guy comes every year and tries to sell me a soft serve machine like McDonald's has that can pour the shake out. I just send them away every year and say, no, we got to hand scoop them. These have to be milkshakes that you eat yep, yep. as much as drink. Yep, you got you to eat your shake, yep. 10 miles east, we pull over at the Alps Candy Shop. We make about 300 products here in store, yeah, down in our little kitchen. That's where we meet Matthew Wilson, candy maker, hot sauce saucier, and recipient of some of the best kept secret recipes in the state. How do you manage to stay as, as fit as you are when you are surrounded by all this goodness? <laughs> I do not, actually. <laughs> I'm prone to snacking. Upstairs, you'll find 30 kinds of homemade fudge, their famous peanut butter crunch, and all kinds of sauces. Downstairs, Candyland comes to life. It's where nostalgia meets fun, and brands that make you go, really? Oh, and candy cigarettes. It seems like you have so many different kinds of candy here that I could put like just two nouns together and you would have that. Like hammer truck. Mm, no. Turtle moccasin. No. Unicorn yak. We have that. We have that upstairs in our soda room. It's true. You'll find it next to Kitty Piddle, Worm Ooze, and Farrah Fawcett Cream Soda. They're all funny names, but they have really good flavors. Where's the health food, you ask? Well, this popcorn is made with apples, and we're getting pickle-flavored saltwater taffy. Some road trips are just better when you can pig out. That looks like the tastiest drive ever. <laughs> Thank you so much to Saint. I did check their website and they passed 50,000 shakes. Oh. And we're still not done yet, so. I'll get a chocolate one to add to that list too. And the 59er Diner and Alps are open seven days a week. Well, Kelly, we know the Lake Chelan is a great place to go on a hike, but what if you don't know the area? or you don't have one of these. Well, there's a company in Seattle that's been leading the way with paper maps. Interesting. There's something exciting about a paper map, even if they are hard to fold. A good friend told me, you know, like every great adventure starts with a map spread on top of a cooler, preferably with a beer can in each corner. Green Trails Maps in Seattle has been putting the places we love on the map since 1973. Mountaineers Books distributes the maps all over the West Coast. They're widely regarded as a hiking essential because in remote places, a low-tech map can be your best friend. $10 insurance policy, batteries don't die. You know, you drop your phone, it's busted. Having that map in the back pocket is a cheap peace of mind. Hikers navigate from the enchantments to Lake Ozette following these trademark green trails. And hikers also make these maps, like guidebook author Tammy Asars. I am a field researcher for them. I go out, boots on the ground, on trails, and document maps. Armed with a GPS tracker and a map in its rough draft stage, Tammy is working with cartographer Chuck Kitterman. Well, we're um, doing some field research for an update to the Middle Fork Snoqualmie map for Green Trails. 
On the relatively new Oxbow Loop Trail in North Bend, they gather first-hand information about trail features like nurse logs and rest stops that will go into a new map. Boots on the ground research is one of the things that sets green trails apart. Well, I've probably contributed over a thousand miles for green trails maps. Uh, and it's, uh, it's so much fun because this is my office. <laughs> Incorporating the outdoor experiences that I always wanted to do growing up and, you know, using that to really produce art in the form of a map. These maps are works of art. They're beautiful. I don't know. I love to geek out on maps. Just put them out on a table and stare. Just enjoy looking at them and dreaming. They're also snapshots of geologic history, like this map of Mount St. Helens before the eruption, and this one made after, with the mountain's contours changed forever. A good map tells a story. You know, you kind of have to see the big picture, and a map can give you the bigger picture. And it's also an invitation to go out and find a story of your own. It's a million places to go every map you open. Thank you, Jimmy, and remember, a good map can always help you to find your way, unless you're me, because I can have many maps and I always get lost <laughs> anyway, so that's why. It's an adventure, okay? <laughs> Coming up, Tom Douglas shares a recipe for a delicious soup that will keep you warm this fall. Welcome back to the show. As you can see, we are indoors right now, and that is because it's getting a little chilly out there. And with that, I have a question. Do you need something to warm you up on fall? Yes. And perhaps <laughs> fill you up a little bit? I definitely think yes, because soup season is my favorite season. Okay. So Chef Tom Douglas is actually bringing us a delicious soup that's perfect for this fall weather. Hmm, what a coincidence. It is fall, it is cold, windy, rainy, uh, all those things that make you wanna sit down to a hot bowl of soup. Cheddar broccoli to me is a little heavy. So I'm gonna make a, a bit lighter version for you that I think is delicious. This is a butternut squash that uh, my wife grew at our farm over in Prosser. I'm gonna put that right into a nice chicken stock. Uh, I'm going to pick some of my, um, an herb that you might not use very often in your kitchen, but sometimes is available in the store. This is called savory. I'm just gonna pick that off the stem. And then I have a little fresh thyme that I picked earlier. So I'm gonna leave my broccoli out. I have a little blanched broccoli florets. Now, one of the things for me when you're building a soup is don't ever put anything in your soup that's bigger than the spoon you're gonna eat with. Okay, I'm gonna put my herbs in, a little salt and a little black pepper. And then uh, one of my favorite kitchen tools are these, uh, they're about $50, I think. They're called immersion blenders, <laughs> stick blenders. And uh, the, the most important thing about these is you have to immerse them, right? You don't want it on the surface or you're gonna spray soup around your kitchen. So you put it all the way to the bottom and start, start that. Now I'm gonna hold on to my pan and I'm just gonna do this until my squash is pureed. For me is I want this as my base, but I'm gonna put my broccoli in in pieces. I don't wanna puree my broccoli. That's why it's okay to, if you miss a couple of pieces of squash, because you're already gonna have uh, chunks in there anyway from your broccoli. I never bring my soup to a boil, only to a simmer. I'm gonna add the broccoli, just a light gentle stir for a minute. All right, let's bring it to the table. I can't tell you how many times I see people bring the soup ladle to the bowl instead of the bowl or pan to the to the bowl, and then you don't get so much uh, drippage. Okay, one of my favorite ingredients uh, that I've found lately in the marketplace is called rose harissa. Now, if you're familiar with harissa, it's a little preserved lemon pepper paste, uh, typically from Morocco. This one actually has rose petals in it, and I just put a dollop of rose harissa right in the soup. That, my friends, is a way to bring warmth into the fall season. Thanks, Chef. That looked so delicious, and that is my favorite soup. Sounds like you're very hungry, Kelly. I am. My stomach is growling. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show, and as you can see, Kelly, 
They heard you here. They brought you the food. My dream and my wish has been answered. Yeah. We have an affogato. We have apples with caramel and peanut butter and chocolate. So delicious. Well, I have fun with you here in Lake Chelan, but sadly, time is running out, Kelly. Oh, I hate hearing that because today was the best day. Thank you to Cider Press for hosting us. And if you're in Manson, make sure you come check them out. But now we're going to leave you with some beauty shots of Lake Chelan. Look how I finished this. Oh, what? You're chugging. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, don't mm. worry. That's non-alcoholic. Mm. And while you're doing that, I'm going to eat. Yeah. Mm.